Hi guys, I thought I'd show you the nano retrex I've been working on. Now this is quite simply a clone of the GWS nano retrex set. I'm not going to make any you know, any other claims other than that's exactly what it is. Um, printed in a 3D uh, environment. Now the reason I did that is because I wanted them even smaller and the GWS nanos were the smallest out so Step one was to get a working 3D printed model, and here we have it. It comes unassembled. I assembled it with two pins, which are located here and here, and two screws, which is located, which are located here and here. So if we hook up a push rod. I'll grab myself a pair of tweezers so I can get my hands out the way and show you this in operation. So all the parts join together and it operates very freely and very smoothly. Mm -hmm. I'm only hanging on with a pair of tweezers and even that's not a very good job. There we go. See the operation happening there. Now what was happening with this one, because it is the first print, we were just through about in the 95, uh, 45 position, it would rub just there. So it required just a couple of brushes of uh, sandpaper to free it up. And another thing is, even though when in the down position, the full down position, it locks because of that knuckle there. So once that's up, once you remove the lock, then the gear will come back up so there's no pressure on the servo. It's not quite 90 degrees, it's just a bit short. I needed to make this arm here just a little bit longer to push it out all the way. So these are the things I've noticed. We've got a bit of brushing at 45 degrees, a bit of sandpaper took care of that, and the arm here was just a bit too short. So I've had to lengthen that in the 3D model. So I've done that, and the next print set should take care of these problems. Now, like I said, there was nothing smaller. So, what was I up against? I've now got a 3D model. I wanted it uh, smaller. So, what we've had to do is take that model and shrink it down. So now we're 67% scale of the GWS Nano clones. So we'll just take them out of the picture for a minute. And now, I'm going to back up and we won't see anything. We've now got these retracts. And as you can see, very small. And the most exciting part about it all is, once it's been assembled, um, the two pins located there and there, uh, 0.7 mil mild steel and two very very thin 0.4 mil screws. I'll try and zoom in but the camera might not even like it being... you see them there? They're tiny. That was a bit fiddly putting them in. We still got the job done. And I'll get a pair of tweezers to get my hands out the way. and show you these functioning. Very smooth, very light. Works great. In the down position, um, this locks. So I'm actually kicking it out of the tweezers there. And pull straight back up again. So we've got a locking it locking in the down position. Very handy. No pressure on the servo. And straight back up again. Um, I noticed that the error in the 90 degree down position of the landing gear leg or strut is more prevalent in a smaller retract. It actually shows up much better in a smaller retract, which is very interesting. That's how I spotted it. I didn't spot it in the big one at first. The big one. Yeah, good one. I didn't spot it in the big one first, but when I was cycling the smaller one, that's what I noticed it 
was missing that 90 degree down position. So we've taken care of that, like I said, in the 3D model. And the next thing is to print off the version number 2's and see how they turn out. And from there, mount them in a model and see the result. What's something, because you guys don't know how tall I am, I'm about 5'8 to you guys, that is a exacto number 11 knife um, coming up. So there's the, uh, the knife so you get an idea of the, the size that I'm going for. This is made for really small stuff. Um, my button retract, which is even smaller, well, when I break it out right now while we're doing the video. Stand by. Alright, I've got a pile of stuff here that's been printed by Shapeways. And now this one had a few problems. It um, was a bit too thin in one area, a bit too thick in the other. It needed tweaking here and there. So that's what I've had to do. So it's not strong enough to rotate by using the push rod and the mechanical arms. I've got to make that stronger. So that's what I'm up to. I've done that. I've got to um, adjust that in the software to correct those errors. But once those errors are done, um, then it's going to be functioning much better. Now this is for seriously ultra micro stuff. This is really small. I'll show you it here. Okay, so that's the GWS, let's all move that back a bit for the sake of the camera. Right, so you, you've got the Nano, let's call this the Uber Nano. You've got the button retract here. So its profile is a lot, a lot s smaller. You see that side on compared to this. Um, you can see what you're up against for the, the profile. Um, the button retract its profile is as narrow or as shallow as the base plate so that's quite small and I've got to use a pin here to make it function here we have it here I'll just back it up a bit so that we uh, don't drown out the camera I'm whispering because my head's right next to the camera so I don't know whether I'm drowning out the, uh, the audio too much so what we have here is that we'll have the the push rod goes in here is secured with a grub screw but I'm guessing a bit of CA will probably be a lot easier because that is a really seriously small screw hole and as it pushes down everything moves I'm going to have to tweeze at this so you're going to miss everything uh, let's grab it over here. Alright, so I have to use the landing gear, like I said, because unfortunately I don't want to put any extra stress on the mechanics of the push rod arm. So here it is functioning, going up, down. It's really smooth. Um, and it's functioning. You see it this way, you'll see the arms moving in and out do it this way too so you get geezer both ways arms go down arms come up you see this arm moving here as well very smoothly so I'm really happy with this this is printed as is it's printed as a functioning unit there's no assembly required so what you see is what you get this little unit will print the push rod pushes this arm in which rotates the landing gear down and this is a nice 90 degree down position so that worked out really well if you can see it there lovely yeah so I've made adjustments on this model as well and the 3D model in my software and that's ready to print as well so I've just had to beef up um, this section here was a bit too thin. It's allowing the push rod to wobble around too much, and it's just a bit too flimsy for the job. So I've had to um, just beef that up. And there was one other thing. This little 
knuckle here, if you want to call it, or stud, was a bit too thin and a bit too close. So we had to enlarge that to make it stronger and move it away from this join to make it uh, print freer. Because unfortunately, some of the sintering, because it's so small, the heat from the plastic and the powders is actually joining the parts together because it's so close. They did recommend 0.1 millimeters for a gap to use, and I have done that, but some of the parts stuck. So I've increased the gap here and here because they were a bit seized up, if you want. And the first rotation was a bit scary because I could feel things were sticking, and I had to like seesaw it until it let go, and then away it went. So I've just made the adjustments that were necessary to make this thing work very nicely. Yeah, so that's the size of the landing gear we're working with here. This is exactly the sort of thing I would see in the ultra micro warbirds and stuff like that. And for this, I would expect to see this in the jets, given that you could fit more into the fuselage of the uh, the jets in the way of landing gear. Well, that's what I'm up to, and I'll post more as uh, things develop.